This is something I've been wanting to try out for a while now, and that's some behind the scenes footage of what it's like when I'm making some of my photos. Basically, I'm just going to explain what's going through my head and what I want to capture. While we're still able to go outside, I thought I'd capture some of the sort of well-known Philadelphia cherry blossoms. First off is the riverfront right along Kelly Drive. With most of the cherry blossoms still not peak bloom, I noticed this magnolia tree right along the water. The sunset was looking a little cloudy when I was trying to capture the light peeking through the clouds a little bit and add some depth by shooting through the flowers. I tried to use the bridge here as a leading line from the flowers to the light. The light pretty much vanished after that, so I guess I'll have to come back later when the trees are in peak bloom. The next day, I went to one of my personal favorite spots for cherry blossoms, the Centennial Arboretum. It's kind of special to me because this is where I had my first paid photo shoot. The trees at the center here were already in bloom, so they added plenty of color, and I tried to highlight the sundial in the middle, trying to give it some bit of foreground to the background with the trees. I loved using wide angles, so I tried to get some different perspectives to show just how much the tree was in peak bloom. I had a little bit more room to work with the magnolia trees, but I had the same idea here. This time though, I wanted to show the sun just shining through the petals a little bit. They're a little wider and can open up more. fun, I wanted to actually use my film camera more, so unfortunately I don't have these photos yet. And yes, that is tape holding the bottom of the camera in place. With a slightly wide 35mm lens, I tried getting some overexposed shots that I hope look good on film. Here's a photo to show kinda what I'm going for. Now I don't have a true macro lens, but some extension tubes did the trick and surprisingly aren't that bad if you can't afford a real macro lens. I wanted to get as close as I could to the pedals as I wanted to take full potential of the magnifying capabilities. It's not something I really do a lot seeing as I don't have a real macro lens, but it's something I really would love to get into. I actually got kind of lucky and was able to get some photos of some bees pollinating the flowers. Next stop was Belmont Plateau. A little too busy considering what's happening now though. I tried to find a clear shot to the skyline, but nothing seemed to work. Then I noticed this small tree across the road and I hoped for the best. I really wanted to compress the scene to make the buildings larger, but the longest lens I have is a vintage 135 millimeter lens that I found in a garage sale. You know, just use what you got. I had to slightly pull the branch down just to get the right amount of framing that I wanted. And it was one of my favorite shots of the day, honestly. Last stop was near Boathouse Row, and the best part were these magnolia trees right at the corner. It was later in the afternoon, I wanted to kind of showcase the layers and the texture of the petals with some of the warm light coming in. Classic look up, but a close up wide angle shot did that pretty well, I think. Even not in peak bloom, I think these came out pretty well. I was pretty bummed I couldn't head to DC for Tidal Basin's cherry blossoms, but decided to make the best with what I have here. Also got to take advantage of my makeshift gear just to encourage everyone to work with what they have and to not let gear keep you from getting out there and making progress. 